Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Sophia Sadie, aka Fairy Light, and this is Fairy Frequency. So, welcome back. I know I missed last week. It was 4th of July, and I was traveling. I was in NorCal seeing my family. We always get together, my mom's side of the family, on 4th of July, and there's a ton of us because she is the oldest of eight siblings, and I like over 20 cousins and all of um, my aunts and uncles partners and it's just a lot of people which is a blessing but it's a lot so <laughs> um, I'm back now and I yeah I just have some topics I want to talk about I've had some things come up that are really interesting but I think the biggest theme lately is just having the power to stand on your own and to be yourself fully in this world is so needed right now and it's so important and it's very rare still unfortunately I mean I've seen it here and there but it's still pretty rare and that's because it does take a lot of strength and it takes a lot of deep thinking and time of contemplation and time alone of contemplation and just really understanding yourself and getting to know yourself fully um to become able to do that and in that space because it's so easy to be part of a hive mind it's so easy to follow trends because it's safe first of all that's one of the reasons it's safe to be like other people and to join movements that are popular and trendy because you know it's accepted by a lot of people and so if it gets deemed as bad, at least you have people on your side and it's a safe route to walk. Um, and it doesn't require a lot of thought or deep thinking because it's like the other people already did it for you. So it's just an easy way to live. And unfortunately, a lot of people might people in my generation choose to do that. They choose to just follow trends or follow what's a popular social movement. What's the popular thing to be upset about? What's the popular side to be on? And they just do it because it's the thing to do. And they don't use their own logical mind and come up with their own conclusions and their own decisions about how they see reality is just told to them and they follow in line. So... I'm a person that just can't do that. I've never been a person that can just follow the crowd. I've just been born that way. I was a black sheep in my family. I just never grouped up and like followed the tribe mind. I just have never been that way and I never will. <laughs> so when my generation really started turning this way where they become a hive mind and they just follow trends and social movements blindly pretty much, because it's the cool thing to do. I really just was like, whoa, what is going on here? Because I'm just naturally my dip disposition, deposition is not like that. So I was very confused when the 2020 thing happened and I saw everyone doing it. Just really woke me up and to see how different I am than a lot of the generation that does that and how I was raised to be more liberal and when the things started turning all crazy in 2020 I was like I am not like y'all at all I don't know what I am I was not into politics before but I am not this because this is very off kilter to me and out of alignment so I've just been very in tune with what I'm aligned with and I'm not gonna follow things just because they're trendy um so that's just where I'm at in life and I think it's so important nowadays for more people to start being that way because unfortunately a lot of the trends and social waves right now are not healthy and they are not in alignment and I'm not talking about specific things so I'm just saying in general they're not conducive to even creating positive change on earth. They're just movements that are pretty much wasted energy um, and they're misguided. And so I'm just talking about a lot of things right now. 
I'm not talking about one specific thing. But it's like, if you like a certain type of music and no one else likes it or knows it, you can like that. You can do and be whatever you want in this earth. And I think we need to open our minds even more because I think a lot of people just follow what they're told and they need to go to college and get a job and work a nine to five and that's their life. But there's so much more possibilities in this world, so much more than we're even aware of. And you're not going to create a life of something of greater possibility if you're not even aware of it and you don't even know it's possible for you. But so much is possible for us, especially in this day and age with all this technology and social media. There's so much opportunity for this new generation, Gen Z and Gen Alpha rising up. We have so much opportunity. Gen Z hasn't even, none of us have even hit our Saturn return yet. So think of how successful Gen Z can be. I know everyone likes to hate on Gen Z, but in reality, I was raised as a Gen Z. I was raised around Gen Z. There's a lot of wise Gen Zers. There's a lot of innovative, unique, enterprising, smart, creative Gen Z humans on this earth. We're given a bad rep because I get it. It's all over social media, but trust me, if millennials had social media growing up, they would be a bigger mess than us. Let's just be real. We're just documenting it more. And we're more out there for everyone to judge and critique. And it's like, you guys act like we're the problem. But maybe maybe it's just the fact that we are raised on Snapchat and, <laughs> and Instagram. It's not us. It's just the circumstances in which we are raised. And it's actually not a problem. It's just with every new evolution comes its own set of problems and its own set of negativities and drawbacks. But it's not an overall negative thing. That's why it bothers me so much that the overall narrative right now is that Gen Z is a mess and we're all these things. But it's like, I am a Gen Zer. I was raised around it. All these kids my age, there's a lot of amazing Gen Zers out there. And we do have a new level of creativity and awareness. Um, I will give you that there are a lot in my generation that get led astray but no this is the first time someone's raised with social media and all this stuff so it would happen to anyone right any generation it's just kind of this whole experiment of social media and seeing where it takes the next generation right um it's a lot imagine not having a teenagerhood without social media it's a lot mentally for a young person to go through Um, but it also gives you these new understandings and perspectives that the generation before will never, ever, ever have at that age. They just won't. So it's a gift and we do have a different level of understanding than the generation before us. And that's the beauty of generations. Each generation and next generation has a new level of understanding that can bring more to this world. And I think it really is now the time that Gen Z steps forward and we start bringing all our skills and understanding to this earth in our own new way. We don't have to follow the molds that were before us and what we've been told that we are, what we have to be. Like nowadays, you don't even have to go to college. I know that's like the thing, but it's like um, college was not actually made for everyone. It's not actually... I know there's probably going to get backlash for this, but it's not the, in my opinion, the best way in this day and age. I mean, it's a way. I'm not knocking it if you want it. But um, to me, there's a lot better ways to create a life nowadays. That's just in my perspective, but do what you want. Um there's a lot of opportunities nowadays. Um, so you just got to believe in yourself. I think that going towards entrepreneurship is the new way of being a creative being on this earth and creating your abundance and a life you want without being told who you have to be or what you have to do in the matrix. I think entrepreneurship is a form of starting to leave the 3d matrix because you're able to create your own schedule, your own way, your own everything. 
So I think it is really special to be able to create your own pathway in this dimension that doesn't have to be restricted by someone else telling you who you are, what you need to do, how you need to do it. That never really worked for me. <laughs> um, but that's a blessing that it didn't work, right? So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so important to just fully come to this inner knowing and peace within yourself and understanding of yourself that you don't need other people to validate who you are or what you believe in or what you want to create in this earth, in this world, in your life and who you are in your style and the way that you present yourself and hold yourself and the things you create. It's all based off of what fills your cup and what makes you happy and what you know is good in your mind. You are your own best approval because if you ever need outside approval or you need someone to tell you it's good, then you're always going to be needing that validation in order to be happy. And it undermines your own self-confidence and self-belief and ability to keep going. So it's really important to build that. I think that's the first step in becoming a success in this world, which I think is very important and everyone wants in some degree, right? Is building your own firm foundation of confidence and trust and inner belief and knowing who you are and what you stand for and what you enjoy and what you want to create in this world it's step one for it all so that's what I would say because my channel really is about showing you you can live your highest timeline and showing you how I am manifesting that for myself and it's possible for everyone. I don't like excuses. Like, there's no excuses, okay? Everyone can manifest their highest timeline. Everyone can live their best life. You're choosing not to. That's it, okay? I don't want to hear. So anyways, um... I'm just saying we're all powerful beings. We all have the ability to manifest and create our ideal life. That's just the truth. And people like to make excuses. They like to victimize themselves and say, these people do this to me. These people treat me this way. Like, no, you attract that in. Sorry. That's how things work. So we're over victim mindset. 2024, there's no victim mindset. Okay. You know, everyone needs to work on themselves and create the life they want to live. Everyone is self-responsible, responsible for themselves and their own success and their own happiness. That's how things work. You're creating your reality. And just like no one's a victim, okay? So, yeah, I think the point of life is to be able to live your best life, live your dreams, literally manifest your dreams into this 3D reality because when we're on the other side of the veil, we're always in the dreamland, you know, our ideal dreamland, but the beauty about physical reality and physical life on earth is that we get to bring that dream into the third dimension, which is an interesting process and it's it can be a difficult one, but it's a beautiful process. It's really a gift. And I think that when more people tap into that and realize that's like one of the big beauties of life is to be able to bring your dreams and what you're envisioning and your visions in your head into this reality. Like that's the beauty of it. And um, it's possible for everyone. So why are you making excuses? No one should make excuses, okay? So that's just how it is. So it's not, I'm not saying that it's easy for everyone. I'm not saying it's just the simplest thing. Like everyone has setbacks. That's also the point of life is to go through adversity and difficult things to build that inner strength. Um, and to grow as a soul and evolve. 
no one has it easy. I don't think I've ever met someone who has it perfectly easy. Some people may have it easier, but we all have things in life we have to get through and evolve from and struggles and hard times and a lot of things. So, and like majority of people you know are going through way more than you even have an idea about. People struggle a lot more than you may know. So I think it's important to, yes, give people grace and understanding, but also know that you are fully responsible for your own life. So you can't victim, like be in a victim mindset that all these things happen to you and therefore you don't have a good life. Um, Because it's your responsibility, though, even though you might have gone through things that were not of your doing, maybe, it's still your responsibility to heal from those things, and that's just how things work. And the hardest things you go through sometimes can turn into the greatest blessings once you work through them because they teach you the most profound lessons that help you grow in the biggest ways. You know, a lot of the hard things I've been through have grown me the most, have helped me evolve the most. So, you know, you can never really have regrets in life and be like, I wish I didn't go through this because it led you down this path. Like some of the craziest, hardest things I went through actually led me down and like unfolded a series of events that I had to go through or I wouldn't be here right now in this place. Right. So everything does happen for a reason, obviously. Um, we all know that. And also, you know, maybe some people that are like really into astrology, which I am obsessed with astrology. I always have been since I was like nine, (laughs) but, um, some people are like, Oh, you can't manifest because it's your, you know, your astrological transits you're going through. You can't manifest. Okay. I agree. Like I'm going to go through Saturn on my son, no matter what. Right. But you can, in my opinion, manifest because manifesting is more of a way of being it's a way of experiencing reality and the way you flow energy um you can manifest the way in which you experience it you know like you could be in a lot lower of a space having a lot more difficult of a time right you're still going to go through those transits but it's up to you in what way you experience it and what level of positivity and all that stuff. So, and in what area of life you're in, I think that you do have control over that. So you have control up to a certain point, right? You have control in which way you experience it, your mindset and everything. Um, but yeah, of course, I also believe you don't have control over what your transits you're going through. That's just obviously what's happening with the planets. You cannot control the planets. So that's true. But at the same time, within those experiences and those transits, I think you do have control over somewhat how you're experiencing it and in what way and you know because Saturn on your sun can mean many things for you right you could go through in a lot of different type of ways it's up to you and which way you go through it um it's gonna be hard no matter what but you know if you take the transit in stride and you learn the lessons it's gonna be not as hard you know the way to get through Saturn's transits is to work hard and then it's less hard. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, my viewfinder went to sleep because it does that after a while. So I can't see myself now, whatever. Um, literally, I'm drinking a Sprite. I'm like literally, <laughs> oh my God, I was going to talk about being healthy like I found this Instagram page about lead and about how much lead is in so much stuff I don't know you guys I've always been really into healthy eating and stuff and I'm just getting to a point now that it's like you have to weigh it out because if you're so obsessed with being healthy and healthy eating that's taking away from your quality of life that's actually unhealthy in a way right You know, you want to be able to live a good life at this point with all the information out there. Pretty much everything's unhealthy (laughs) to consume. And you've got to weigh it out at some point and be like, I want to live a happy life. I'm going to try my best, but I cannot 
have constant anxiety about this is unhealthy, this is unhealthy, I can't do this, I can't be around this. We are in a day and age that everything is so convenienced in the way that it's packaged and the way that we get it from the grocery store and that we're, we have Wi-Fi, which is unhealthy, and phone radiation, which is unhealthy, but we have all the positives from that. It's a lot easier and simpler and we can do more because we're not spending 70% of our day hunting and gathering food. So we have all this other stuff we do. So there's pros and cons to everything. We have the gift of the internet and being able to connect in that way and share so much information. But of course, there's negatives to that too. So um, I don't know that we can ever have a perfect, you know, existence. I think we're always evolving and adapting. And I think, you know, it takes humans as a species a lot longer to evolve than we do then we as a species that change our environment, we are very fast at changing our environment and our brain and our bodies evolve much slower. So I don't know if that's ever going to even out. So maybe our, it's always going to be behind, right? So I don't know what we can do about that. I think we just have to take it for what it is and be like, this is how humans are we're probably half alien, so we're never going to fully adapt to our environment. But at the same time, we kind of are. You know, we have therapy, we have spiritual coaches, we have all this stuff because people always complain, mentally, we're messed up because we have caveman brain <laughs> or whatever. We're supposed to be in tribes, and which I can agree with, especially being a mother. Like, you need a tribe. It's very, very hard without it. We're not really meant to raise our children in isolation and suburbia, but we do it and we evolve the best we can. We find mom groups. We find ways to do it. We, we figure it out, right? It's not perfect, but nothing in life is. Humans have always just tried their best. Do you think it was perfect back then in those tribal days that we act like we're perfect? I highly doubt it. I, I highly think that it was probably a lot of mishaps and mess ups and mistakes and that's just human nature we make mistakes in order to evolve mistakes mean you're trying that's the same with entre entrepreneurship you will make a thousand mistakes you will have fails you will mess up things will not work but that means you're trying that's a positive thing and I just don't understand where that's been lost because I feel like so many people this goes back to um, hive mentality, not wanting to be wrong. It's good to be wrong sometimes. That means that you're trying, you're trying to learn. You at least tried to answer the question. If you're wrong, that means you have enough confidence put, to push yourself out there. And it's a lot better than keeping everything inside out of fear of failure. Failure is actually not such a negative thing, you know, that we feel that it is. It's a stepping stone in order to find the way that works. So I think we should reframe that and that anyone who has failed is something that just means they tried at something, you know, that's how you get better. Um, you don't, you're not born knowing all these things you learn in life. And the more times you fail, that means that's how much you've tried, you know, and eventually you'll get it right. That's just how life is. So that's something that I think we should understand more failure is not a negative thing. And that's something I've struggled with is not wanting to fail at things, but that's just how it is. That's how you get better. So I think that's important to reframe that for everyone that just put it out there. You know, I, I stumbled across this girl's YouTube channel that I've, I've seen her videos before like a video, one of her videos before, and it was recommended to me again, and I went to her channel, and she posted 10 months ago, and then three months ago, and then a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, she like sporadically been posting, and she said she, in one of her videos I clicked, she said she had a whole vlog, and then she didn't post it, because she just didn't like it, and then, you know, I've been there in a way, you know, and so I get it, and I think a lot of people might struggle with that, and it's like, then I saw comments and people were like, just post it. We, we like anything. Just post it. We want to watch, you know? So it's just like, 
the perfectionism and the fear of failure and the wanting it to look a certain way. That's what holds so many of us back, but it's, it's better to just put it out there and try. And it's not going to be perfect because I don't know if that's possible, but it feels so good when you're actually just doing it and creating something and able to be proud of something that's not perfect because it is perfect in its own way. And it's progress, you know, progress is better than perfection. Um, I watched a podcast too about this girl. She made a jewelry line just randomly and in her house, she just made these random necklaces and put it out there and it was not perfect. It was not exactly how she wanted it. She put it out there and it sold out and now she has this huge jewelry line that all these celebrities wear and that's just how it is. Like you've got to just believe in yourself and do it, even if it's not up to your standards. Because at the beginning, it probably never is. And that's what she even said. Like she didn't even want to do necklaces at first. She wanted to do earrings, and that's what she did because it was the cheaper option for her at that time. And now she's able to do the, what she actually wanted to do, the earrings and everything. Um, so that's just like be yourself, express yourself. We're here to be creative beings and express ourselves and stand in our own energy and be strong enough to do that. And it's going to look different. It's not going to follow certain trends. It's not going to follow what's out there already. Just find that within yourself. And that comes through learning about yourself and what you truly like and believing in yourself. And I think it takes a lot of strength and time to yourself honestly and that's why a lot of people, spiritual people say when you're when you're like god's isolating you or whatever it's to work on yourself and to really evolve spiritually and i think that's true and i think a lot of people need to go through that it's a powerful thing to really get to know yourself without outside opinions and who you think you should be like and people around you telling you to be a certain way so yeah that's like the vibe of this generation is to, I want to see more unique people out there. That's my advice for you all. Stop with the hive mind. That's like so boring and overdone. So if I see a hive mind shit, I'm instantly like, girl, stop. Taylor Swift, really? Everyone likes that shit. It's not even good. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> like, do you like it or do you like it? Cause everyone else likes it. Ask yourself that. There's a lot better music out there. Okay. You just gotta look for it. Um, who do I like? I mean, like, there's a lot of people. So, even Kali Uchis, can't even say her name, Lana Del Rey, they're even better, but now they're getting more popular. Um, I like IMDGB, Green Tea Pang, she's kind of not making music as much anymore. Um, Big Pig, she's a really good voice. Um, Nike Heat, and she stopped making music. Who else is there? I'm trying to remember. But anyways, I liked Doja Cat when she was underground. I like started listening to her in high school before anyone knew about her really. She was like underground SoundCloud rapper. I would listen to her on SoundCloud and her music was a vibe. Now I'm like, I don't know what's up with her. But yeah, I would listen to like the cool underground girl rappers. Abra, you know that's who I used to listen to in high school. They were vibes. They had a vibe. Anyways, bye guys. I gotta go. So I was checking my baby monitor. (laughs)